Being an engineer and a fabricator is kind of like being a wizard. You can imagine something in your mind and then make it real. With laser cutting, you can turn two-dimensional things into three-dimensional things, making you a hyper-dimensional wizard. People love CNC and 3D printing, but you can weld up a laser cut boxed upright in the time it takes you to set up a CNC. It's also often a more efficient structure. You lose a little bit of dimensional accuracy with the welded structure, but it's unbeatable if you're aiming for close enough. And you know me, why do something the hard way when you can do it good enough in 20% of the time? It's also great for things like brackets. I don't want to single anybody out, but a lot of people spend way too much time on brackets. Don't do this. Just draw it, flatten it, DXF it, laser it, and get a whole mess of brackets in the mail while you're watching YouTube. <laughs>since I'm making a dry sump oil system, I need a place to put all the oil, a reservoir. You can buy these, but they're expensive and I don't have a lot of room in this tiny car. Even the smallest ones would require modification to the car or the reservoir. There are inexpensive used NASCAR ones, but they are larger than my actual car, almost. So we'll make one. Round might be better, but that doesn't package as well and it doesn't work with my favorite manufacturing process. So we're gonna do something different. This car is absurdly small and it's really tight in here. Even the trunk is small and I don't feel like running lines to the back anyway, so we'll shove a tank under the hood somewhere. But where? We need it to be somewhat tall so that when I go around a corner, the oil doesn't slosh away from the pickup. How about here? Some of you will note there is a coolant hose here, but that's fine. We can move that. We can make a weird upside down triangle shape. To make sure we get enough volume in here, I'm going to 3D scan this area and then design around that scan. For this, we'll just use my iPhone, which is perfect because we don't need any fine details. I used an app called Scaniverse to scan this. I got all the pertinent details, the engine, the radiator, the motor mounts, my shoes. Take that scan and pull it into Fusion 360. If you're not sure which CAD software to use, you probably want to use this one. It's free for personal use. There is some sheet metal functionality, but I'm going to do this the simplest way in case you're new to CAD, but also because that's the way I do it. 90% of CAD is extrusions. Remember those Play-Doh extruders that squeeze out different shapes? That's pretty much CAD. You draw a sketch, extrude it, then repeat. Some of your extrusions add material, some take it away. That's basically it. When you import your scan from your phone, it'll be just randomly placed all willy-nilly, so select the mesh and use the move copy function to get it aligned with the origin. You just want the scan to kind of line up with these three planes, so one of the planes cuts through the car front to back, one side to side, and one top to bottom. So remember our process is sketch, extrude, repeat, but our sketches have to be on a plane, so pick a plane like this middle one here and draw a sketch on it. Then we just squeeze our Play-Doh out in the shape of our sketch. Cool, except we're crashing into our fan, so we'll draw a sketch on the top and extrude a cut partway up to clear the fan. I know I'm going over this quickly. I'm not going to get too much deeper into Fusion 360. There are a million videos out there on how to use it. If you want to do this kind of stuff, it's definitely worth your time to go through a few basic tutorials. You can also just Google Fusion 360 and then whatever you're trying to do, and you'll probably find the answer in the first two or three links. Anyway, extrude for a while until your reservoir clears all the obstructions. Now we have a solid 200 pound block of aluminum but we need it to be hollow so that we can put oil in it. To do that, use the shell function and specify a thickness for the shell. This will be the thickness of the material we're gonna get laser cut. I'm gonna use 125 thousandths of an inch, which is about three millimeters. We need a cap. I bought one of these, which needs a two inch hole. So sketch out and extrude a cut on the top. I also need an inlet and an outlet. For that, I'm gonna weld on these guys. So sketch out and cut those holes. The thing about dry sump oil systems is they suck up oil from multiple places inside the engine, but they also suck up from places where there's no oil. So the oil coming into the reservoir is a frothed up double frappe oil chino. You need to get the air out of the oil before it gets to the bottom of the reservoir where the outlet is. A lot of reservoirs do this by having a tangential inlet and swirling it around a round baffle inside, but we don't have a round reservoir, so we're gonna do the Donkey Kong approach. This is where we have some angled levels inside that the oil trickles down. At the end of each level, we can add some slots or circles that help separate the oil and the air bubbles. Some people will tell you that circles are best, some people prefer slots, but I'm gonna go ahead and add both. Circles and slots. Very nice. I'll also add a couple more slots and four more circles up here just for good measure. Oh yes, excellent design. For the next layer, we'll do some circles and then just something more random, like a bunch of random shapes and random directions that don't actually mean anything. Oh, I like that. Very appealing. 
Okay, so we have our reservoir designed. Now to make it laserable. We need to extract the two dimensional shapes from this, but since the aluminum will have some thickness, three millimeters, they're not exactly two dimensional. There are a couple of ways to do this. Let's say you're making a cube. You can't just select the top and the side to get those cut to size because they'll both occupy the same space in the corner and occupying the same space at the same time is hella illegal. You can shorten one by the thickness of the other one, and this is what I often do with steel. I like this because you get better dimensional accuracy because the sides are all butted up against each other. You don't need a ton of filler with steel, so you can just weld one piece into the other. You do need to use filler with aluminum, otherwise your welds will be very brittle. So for this, we're going to reduce both sides by the thickness of the other side. This way, we'll have a groove here that we can fill with weld. This is actually not a bad idea to do with steel as well if you're really wanting a strong weld. In fact, the best might be a middle ground where you have some over overlap and a groove for welding. Anyway, continuing with our simple example of a cube, all you have to do is select the inside of each face and sketch that face. Now, I always add tabs to locate everything. This seems kind of tedious, but it's actually pretty quick. Just sketch up a little tab on each side. Then when you get to the adjacent side, sketch up two tabs on either side of that tab with the gap between them of about five thousandths of an inch or a tenth of a millimeter. When you're done making all these sketches, you can just right click on them and select save as DXF. DXF is the file format you'll send to the laser cutter, so this is super easy. If you're confident in your sketches, you're done with CAD, but I like to double check everything. Hide your main body here and then extrude each one of your sketches to the thickness of the material you'll be using so you have an actual representation of what you're going to get in the mail. When you do these extrusions, make sure to select new body for each of them so it doesn't try to add it to the old body, and then do an interference detection. Remember my Donkey Kong levels? Those sketches will have some interference when you extrude them either on one side or the other. So just go in and edit your sketch to make one side shorter. I also added tabs on these Donkey Kong levels and slots in the sidewall so they'll locate inside the reservoir. Once you've made all your files and uploaded them, you'll wait a few days, and then your parts will arrive. You'll notice that I have bends in some of my parts. Yes, you can flatten two surfaces and sketch a dotted line between them and specify your bend angle and direction. This is next level multi-dimensional wizardry, and frankly, I don't think you're ready for it yet. If you're an avid viewer of Super Fast Matte, you know that my welds are a solid 5 out of 10, sometimes better, sometimes worse. I have some decent aluminum welds under my belt, but they are way under my belt. I welded this up about nine years ago, and I haven't really done much aluminum welding since then, so let's see how this goes. I started by welding the tabs into the waterfalls. This way I could sort of bend them into place to get the other side on. Welding started out pretty poorly, but it did improve. That's not bad. Right there. Not so much there. Not really there. But this part, not bad. Once you're done welding, it's time to check for leaks. To do this, seal up the inlet and outlet, possibly by just connecting them together, then fill the tank with water and pressurize it to about 20 PSI. If you did this right, you won't have any leaks. If you did it like I did it, your tank will look like the fountain at the Bellagio. So take it back inside and weld up all those holes. Then bring it out and try it again. Do that three or four more times and you should have a watertight tank. I also had to modify my radiator because I had that inlet hose in the way. I just moved that to the front and plugged the rear hole. I also welded a mount on the top for the reservoir to bolt to. I connected the inlet and the outlet together and pressurized it using my coolant pressure tester. And you're not going to believe this, it didn't leak at all. Totally sealed the first time. And I know you're waiting for me to say, just kidding, it leaked all over. But no, I actually got this right the first time. Huh. Broken clocks. I also decided to amortize the cost of my CNC router by making a label for the oil cap. Anyway, that's about it. If you enjoyed this tutorial on hyperdimensional wizardry, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and if you didn't enjoy it, do it anyway, or the algorithm will punch you in your sleep. I don't have the engine running yet, but once I do, I will put up a video of the oil de-aerating down the dashes and circles. You know, if you look at these just right, they kind of look like...